much love friends hope things are strong for you um, send in love had a powerful community meeting highly recommend in the future if you'd like to join feel free it's really strong to get together like that um, yeah there's there's a lot to explore you know when people get together and questions surface that you wouldn't think about had had you not been in a situation like that because there's just there's a support that's felt it's it's a really strong way to to get to know each other um and to just have ins insights into things in our lives we're not separate right so the events that are happening to us the experiences that we're having are often reflected when you meet in like-minded groups and uh, it's good to be able to laugh at our situations and our fears and our dynamics. A lot was revealed about the difference between men and women. Um, difference between the path of heart and the path of the mind. Um, the difference between clarity and power. Um, so, yeah, just fully thankful for everyone that showed up and for everyone that's been to all of these different community meetings. They're getting really strong. And uh, yeah, and then the people that I'm working with one on one, I'm just so honored, truly, like I just learned so much. I'm, you, you know, you're, you're helping me on so many levels. And uh, it's an honor to be, you know, supporting you and your um, in your journey to discover additional resources within your being. And uh, the Toltecs have powerful tools that I've been so honored to learn from really rare and powerful teachers. And I'm not attached to the Toltec system, like I've said, but um, the recapitulation in all the different ways in which it is discovered. Some For some women, it just happens naturally. Um, for more feminine men, that can happen as well. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cool to see the difference between, like, there was a lot of women explaining how they perceive things versus how men talk about their stories and just, we're all, we're all just, you know, not, not that dissimilar when it comes to relationships and connections and how we go about sharing and what our emphasis is. Um, we have so much as men to learn from women. And um, yeah, women have an opportunity to to heal some of their projections and fears that they've placed upon men being in the patriarch and matriarch kind of comparison dynamics. So just a lot of healing that is available during these times, um, especially as these events transpire and forces rise to meet each other the outer distractions and the, the the planned events that are being used to manipulate our perception offer us an opportunity to really go inward and kind of make things to heal up on a, on a heart level and get really clear on you know what, what do we want to do with the remainder of our time here how do we want to feel what are we going to focus on? How do we reclaim our attention? You know, we were put in these MK Ultra programs as students, as, as young age, and we were taught to do things that were unhealthy and unnatural to our being. And so it made it easy to hypnotize us. And then the people that were sort of kept out of that, you know, that does they don't necessarily have an advantage either because eventually they got to face the sort of same hypnotic challenges that are presented. Um, everyone's got a different pathway to getting to know the parts of their ego that are keeping them from discovering what they're truly capable of. And so even in the Amazon, these these beings that would seem to be free of the MK Ultra programming are also under hypnosis as well, as I've talked about. Um, just different kinds. It might be a spiritual warfare. Um, or, you know, a lot of shamans take energy from women as a means to 
advance their dreaming power. <clears throat> so there's still all these like uh, these programs running no matter where you are and what you're doing and getting to know the way in which you've been programmed it's is where it's at because it's rather than focusing on others and and their cognitive dissonance or their unconsciousness we want to look at the areas that um will free us from you know the limitations that we've allowed to be projected onto us by our parents or by our peers and so that's 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 a lot of freedom when you are able to go inward enough and get to know yourself enough that you no longer need the validation of your social circle and then you can really be a much more valuable member to your social circle because you're not holding back or waiting for someone else to say the thing you gain the courage to to, to share your heart and mind openly um, I mean, you still have boundaries and there's people that you probably wouldn't want to share certain things with and then you're likely to gravitate in a different direction than they're going if, if that starts to become the case. So sometimes we make commitments to people that are no longer serving us and it's okay to break commitments. It's okay to reevaluate promises. Um, especially as young, at a young age, we make commitments when we're in our power, we have a lot of intent, and then those commitments end up dictating our future. <clears throat> um, so that's why the recapitulation, you can go back and sort of clear those promises. And, um, and you'll see like where the shadow wound m made that promise because it's usually a promise is usually something that you're like trying to you're trying to control your life you're trying to force yourself to 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 follow through with something and that's just very binding and shamans seek to unbind themselves from social contracts even contracts that we made with ourself um and you know supposedly there we we, we signed up for all this right and so that's another contract to learn about is prior to coming into this um, this particular parallel life you were aware and got to observe and see things your future self was already in place to inform you um, and this is a very revitalizing discovery to to come away from the taking things so seriously and realize that everything's going to be okay you know that this is an incredible gift to be alive and that uh, you have the access to your dream power to go back into when the, your your parallel life was revealed to you or you can as some dreamers do which are called dark dreamers they dream of the future and that makes it really fascinating to be here to be watching events that you see then unfold before your eyes and I think there's a lot of hopium in this world where people are making themselves, trying to convince themselves that if they believe it strong enough or they tell themselves that, that, that everything's just going to go and it is some sort of utopian direction for everyone, that, that, that sort of new age light worker perception that we can create a reality for uh, others. But I, I do not see it that way. It's very personal. And that doesn't mean we won't be able to have uh, enough people come into their personal power that we can then determine a different future for ourselves it's just we don't want to get caught in uh, this idea that everything's already that, that things are just going to be sort of hunky-dory it's we're going to want to prepare and be prepared for all kinds of intensities but that's not by worrying about them that's by discovering your accessing your joy um and that happens by you know being able to admit to where you're at uh we can't fast forward these events to make things okay and if we're attempting to um expedite the process then we just spin our wheels like we got to be in in a real state of honesty about 
how we feel, what our fears are, what, where our distractions lie, what is hooking our attention, um, and start to reclaim our attention. You, your imagination is your lifeline, right? So hmm, how you return to that is, 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 is a beautiful rite of passage to be in. I encourage you to enjoy the process as much as possible. There's ways to beckon that your 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 imagination or what uh, give what we call your inner seer permission, your natural mind, um, to to share with you its its insights, and this is like a type of purification because there's a foreign mind, a program running that, you know, will be given a uh, pause when you learn how to hang out in silence to feel more. It will change everything for you and you will um, no longer be concerned with what's happening in the collective story. You'll be uh, in gratitude for the time that you get to be with yourself and you fall in love with your aloneness. Just all kinds of incredible discoveries are made there. And that makes it possible to have a really powerful partner in your life when you're able to be um, you know, okay regardless of what happens. And some people are really strong, but they tell themselves they're not. And some people are not that strong, but they tell themselves they are. And it, it, our, what we tell ourselves has a lot to do with t to determine what is actually is. Um, but then there's this other part of us that's like not being honest and is just trying to create a pretend reality to walk into. And that's a totally different thing that's lying to yourself um, so knowing the difference you know my teacher would say who's talking is it your natural mind or is that the program controlling your ego convincing you of something so that you don't really go into the depths of your power and really get to know that part of your being that Know, is psychic is capable of foreseeing what you're walking into if you're not lying to yourself then you'll be you'll be listening you'll be in tune you'll be in the in the state of consciousness that won't will make it less easy for you to be um, lied to by others <clears throat> you start to see through deception in different forms and it can be pretty lonely, you know, to see through deception, um, as a lot of us have discovered. It was, it was a real blow to lose so many powerful people to, during the uh, 2020, you know, uh, reveal. And uh, we don't want to pretend that we are above or that we, you know, like, it's a, it's, it's pretty key to mourn things, to mourn loss. And there was a lot of loss. And there's continued to be a lot of loss. Um, and we don't want to leave our heart and, and get into some idealistic concept that since this is a dream, that there's nothing that we don't allow ourselves to feel heartache and stuff. That, that's part of this dream is developing your soul through these experiences that are uh, the, the Earth Mother is holding space for you to experience so that you will return to her, that you'll get to know her on a level in which she can reveal the secrets of this realm. This place is absolute heaven. This place is, the Earth Mother is consciously engaging with you and attempting to unveil to you your relationship to her, which is magical. All technology is magic. Nothing, even the, the, this artificial stuff, it's just an expression of, you know, 
our shadow, our, uh, our undealt with, the spirits of trauma are attempting to, you know, be released. Everyone wants freedom. Even the people that may be possessed and making sure that they're doing their best to stop freedom. It's just based on a wound. But that's the type of world we live in where intent is allowed. And so there isn't really good or bad. There is just intent. And some people use intent in order to control and harvest energy because they're under possession by forces that have figured out how to uh, manipulate our assemblage point position and control the reality in which we perceive. And this is why storing dreaming energy and reclaiming your dreaming attention um, or, you know, becoming liberated through information even for some people uh, leads to eventually you discovering power. And, and that's a personal journey. But dreaming is a gateway to power. Being lucid, being clairvoyant, being um, ultra-sensitive without being caught in this concept of being an empath in which you can't handle unconsciousness or particular things. You're very capable of handling all of these things. It's just what you tell yourself. So your, your words, your thoughts, your feelings are that powerful. And often when you think you're having fear it's or thoughts that are limiting, they're not really yours. That's just the program attempting to blitz you and keep you from seeing how simple it is, uh, how capable you are of healing um, all these areas, these holes of these holes within your consciousness. They can be. Um, it may it may seem like because you've been avoiding these particular areas. Uh, through lack of experience, we tend to be embarrassed about the areas in which we left behind. And then we don't usually, we can spend our whole life defending why we don't address them. And that's where these forces attempt to apply pressure is, is to make your, to make it so that your ego is in a state of defending something. Um, but like I said, everyone's different. Everyone has a different formula. And it's really cool to observe. And when we stop suspending, when we, when we suspend judgment of others, it allows us to see ourselves in others. And then we stop comparing and we just start realizing what an opportunity this is to get to know ourselves, you know, to get to know um, the human drama. The, the, this theater is, it's really sort of, it's a romance, it's a tragedy, it's a comedy, it's all the things that we, you know, attempt to recreate as means to distract, um, but people are larger than life, and love is real. Um, shamans experience affection that would destroy most people, you know, if it were to happen suddenly. Um, so we build our resiliency. That's why the tortoise and the hare, the tortoise is enjoying and is okay with the journey, isn't it? Trying to get it over with or prove itself. It's made peace with its pace. And there's something really powerful about that. There's something really grounded. Uh, the snake, the turtle, these beings that are close to the earth, they're, they're, they're all creatures of, of the earth are connected, are the mother in, in her various forms. And every woman is, is an archetype of the mother. And every man is, you know, a representation of the sun, of the consciousness. Um, and shamans learn to experience and vacillate between being in, in this type of physical form into others, right? But if someone were to say, well, I need you to prove that, that you can shapeshift, it's, 
if somebody's there to disprove it, then it wouldn't happen. That's how powerful intent is. You, anthropologists that attempt to go and validate claims from shamans are going there in a that in their their attempt they'll they'll either be ushered into the magical realm and be have it have it affect them on a personal level where they lose interest in attempting to prove something scientifically or they will uh block their 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 unwillingness to unlock their perception in these altered states is would would just block them from witnessing the magic itself if that makes sense and so shaman, shamanic healers have to have the right amount of people in the room people that are willing to take part in the perceptual expansion in order for these healings to transpire appropriately um, there's a lot of a lot of fake charlatans and tricks and all that and you know so i'm not saying that anyone that claims to have done shamanic healing is valid in fact it's typically the opposite there's a lot of people that are you know attempting to rip people off by tricking them um, but trickery is used in powerful and beautiful ways too sometimes people don't realize how you, well thought out a teacher might be in kind of getting you to surface your ego and so they'll put themselves in embarrassing situations where you think you're exposing them but they're really exposing your ego those are like Hayoka people those are people that are willing to be seen as the fool in order to you know reveal particular things about our, ourselves uh, and there's a lot of freedom in that if you're no longer afraid of being the fool then nobody can make you a fool and this is why having a flexible perception is so critical that we, we we don't go up against or try to take on the tyrants of this world that doesn't bode well for anyone but if you can learn to laugh at yourself and laugh at them and uh, have fun you become untouchable and you're not at war if there's no fight within there's no, there's no fight that's going to manifest outside of you that doesn't mean that you won't be in a war-torn country and having to navigate things uh, it just means that your dream power will determine rather than sort of like fate you you get to move into a place where you have an extra bit of clarity and you have access to your dreaming body which would allow you to sort of assess things out from from a distance and decide where to go and when to go and you're following your intuition on a totally different level um, and so the world is presenting opportunity for us to cultivate our awareness in ways that we just simply wouldn't be if these intensities weren't manifested um, we get to we get to witness things that will make it easier and easier to come to terms with the fact that this is a world of power and that in order to thrive in a world of power we're gonna have to or we get to reclaim our power and the most powerful thing you can do is have a life in which you are truly engaged and have purpose you're on a path of heart and you're feeling joy and gratitude gratitude alone can make all the difference in the world and sometimes it takes a little extra something to get to that gratitude it might be spending some time in nature alone until something shifts in you it might be spending some time in a dark closet alone until something shifts in you or it may be just allowing yourself to follow your passion of going in a direction of life that you know you never gave yourself uh, you never believed in yourself in that way and um, there's just there's always like the world is set up in a way that there's a place for you there you're needed 
and the goal I think for for um, particular agendas is to to make us not realize that and and to sort of get so spun out that we lose our our connection to people a lone wolf is a dead wolf and we we do want to acknowledge and learn how to navigate and work in a wolf pack um, otherwise the the you, the hermit part of you can get really lost and i'm not saying you know you can't spend time alone you can spend a lot a lot of time alone because you're not really alone if you're able to you know if you're able to do it in a, in a sustainable way then you're you're with the earth mother and you're being talked to and worked with and incredible discoveries are made in aloneness but if that becomes for you the only way that you can't be with people because of what you discovered in your aloneness, then that becomes a trap too. We want to be flexible to do both. And um, yeah, it's that's why stalking and dreaming are uh, the, the, the two different things that shamans learn. Some are naturally stalkers and some are naturally dreamers has to do with the assemblage point for some people the assemblage point moves really easily for some people it takes a lot more effort but the benefit of the assemblage point not moving as easily means that when they do reach a shift they can stay in that particular shift without it being erratic um and then yeah there's just all kinds of dynamics that the toltecs explain you know reading the castaneda books one round it does just doesn't work you have to read them over and over if you really want to understand them and i'm not saying that's necessary but i see a lot of people avoiding that that manual when it would really benefit them and it's okay we resist the, sometimes the things that would bring balance to our lives and then there's a lot of people that are caught up in those books and are using them to avoid their life and um there's been times in my life where that was what what was happening for me. So there's there's no particular formula. We're not lab rats here. Everyone has a different way forward and a different way to get inward. Um, what some people talk about going in is a totally different than other uh, references for that. A lot of people don't realize how much silence there is to experience. They have a taste of it and they think, oh, that's meditation and that's nice. But you can go past that point into the more active side, the adventurous side of energetic discoveries. And that's where real power lies. Um, and that's the type of power that is going to make it possible for us to evolve, in my opinion. Uh, and I'm not saying everyone is therefore assigned that task. I think some people, their contract is to to totally stay in the intellect and, and really dive deep into information and that they have the capacity to carry a lot of information with them. Um, but like I've said before, shamans seek to become a hollow bone, to become empty so that knowledge is accessed more through the Akashic records than it is through having studied. Um, so each to their own and, and everyone you know, obviously Jason has read, uh, Jason Bashir's has read so much and is just able to share that, what he's read in, a, in such a precise and impactful way that I wouldn't want him, I'm so glad he's not tripped out and lucid dreaming and doing that because he's, he's providing such valuable, uh, a valuable bridge for, from the mind toward intent. He's teaching people how to access their power um, in a very particular way. And I think for many people, that's going to be, it's obviously changing their lives. What I'm offering is really different and it's not for the majority, but it is a very, also another way of um, establishing your relationship with intent. Um, so even though him and I are coming from totally different places, our conversations are really fascinating. 
<clears throat> so looking forward to joining up in San Diego with these guys and it's coming up really soon. So today's the 12th. Um, yeah, it's on the 21st in San Diego. I look forward to meeting some of you that'll be there. Um, by all means, feel free to reach out for mentoring or uh, to connect in the community meetings. Look forward to meeting up with more of you. You know, as as we continue, what, what Rachel and I are doing is really pretty rare, and it's a real honor to be holding the type of space that we're holding. Um, it's just kind of been a long time coming, and everything's sort of lining up now in a really strong way. And just really appreciate all of you, those of you that asked me to start doing this. And, uh, yeah, just continue to, um, yeah, be honest with, with ourselves and show up as we are and really feel into each step, each, you know, rather than being in autopilot, we can really feel our way through our lives. Um, but we don't, we also want to act. We don't want to get caught in just pure observation, go out and have experiences, gain, you know, understanding through experience, um, when you feel called to much love.